Hello all, so first of all, warm welcome to this course on image processing and computer vision. So let's begin. So we will be starting with our lecture series. This is the entire course, I mean, and uh, you will find it useful. So let's begin. So the very first topic here today is about image filtering. So as you can see here that we have something called as image filtering. It is a very first topic in image processing in computer vision, right? So I'll be starting with what is an image. So let's see what the outline is first of all. Yeah, so what is an image? Various image transforms, then the actual lecture title that is how filtering will help. Then we'll see various types of filtering as you can see. Here there are various types of filtering, linear versus non-linear. We will see all this thing in thorough detail. Then we will be seeing this. These are linear types of filtering, Gaussian filtering and average filtering. This is non-linear type of filtering. And then at the end we will see edge detection if time will permit, right? And especially the non-linear filtering we will try to cover in this lecture. But if not, then we will see in later part of the lecture series. So firstly, what is an image? what do you think what is an image so image can be represented as a function a simple function in terms of x and y so here you can see that image is just a function of x and y right so this is a terminator image and the image i will always try to give credits to the image from which i adopted right so it is from university of washington steve sites so uh, i will always try to give proper credits now coming back to our point so image is just a mathematical function. So every point or we can say every pixel it, or as we all know that image is composed of pixel, right? So for every point it indicates the brightness or intensity. So here it's a, it's a gray image, but we can have the colored image in which we have RG and B, right? So in that we will be having three different vectors, right? Three different intensity values for three different channels that is red green and blue channel right but for simplicity i am just considering here the gray image so simply it is denoted by i of x y which is where i stands for intensity right and it is a function of two variable as you can see here that is a function of two variable and you can see where it's this is the domain this is the range right but as we all know that since our image shows intensity values so we already know that uh, this can't be infinity right intensity can't be infinity so it won't cover entire r but in general we can write r but it should be somewhat limited to some intensity value right so now let's see what is a digital image having seen what image is let's try to see what is digital image right before that we will cover one uh, single topic called image transform so because we considered image as a function of two variable x and y or we wrote i of x comma y we consider it like this so we can say that we can perform any operations that we can operate uh, perform on functions in mathemat on mathematical functions right so one of the transform is shown here that this is some intensity value image and we are converting it by adding any arbitrary constant right and you can see the contrast is changed right because each and every pixel we are adding 24 to it and correspondingly we are getting some different contrast in here right similarly you can flip the image because we know that if my image is given f of x comma y i can just flip my x axis and i will get mirror image right you can flip both as well right it, it will be upside down right so n number of things that we can do we can do image rotation translation everything that we can do with the function right so this is nothing but basics of image transform so moving ahead what is a digital image so now previously what we saw was that our image was you can see in the previous slide that it they were continuous function because the terminator image that i just showed you was just a continuous function of time yes isn't it but what if we have discrete image it will be more helpful right 
because we are in a digital world digital uh, world means digital processors right and we know that digital process digital signal processors are having more efficient more efficiency than analog one so what if we have discrete images right so simply what we will do is that we will just use sampling just recall from your basic courses that given an analog signal i am giving an analogy to the signal right if i will multiply it this is multiplication with a impulse train a train of impulses right what we will get is the same function with the same shape but it will be discretized right you can see it is discretized because of this impulse train so the same thing we can do here this is very famous image nowadays it is a corona virus you can see it so it's an analog image and after sampling and obviously sampling will be followed by quantization right we know why quantization is needed so i'm not going into that right so it's just an approximation so this is the digital image and after that you can see you can get the quantized image and each image pixel this is called in digital image this will is called a single pixel each box represents one pixel and in pixel they have some values and values is nothing but intensity values right or we can say brightness values so we sample our continuous time function and get discrete time function and how we sample i just showed you right now let me just erase it and now we will see that image filtering our actual uh, having completed basics of what image is now let's see let's try to see what is image filtering so first of all let's see what, what is the need of filtering now as the name suggests filtering so it will filter something like noise or something right so the very first point is that it will filter noise as you can see here that it will filter noise reduce noise then to fill some missing information in the image that it might be possible that in some image there is something missing right so we can fill it by uh, having some intensity giving some intensity values from its neighborhood because image will be somewhat similar to the intensity values in the neighborhood right we will see this thing and to find some important features like edges corners and so on yeah we will see edge detection everything as i already told you in the very first slide of the outline that we will cover the entire edge detection and corner detection so stay tuned for that so now uh, why it is a need because the image will look better right after filtering image will always looks better so that's why we need filter but mathematically how we will be performing filtering because having defined image as a function as a mathematical function to be precise there should be some operation on that function on that image so that we can have filter right or we can say we can have image filtering so what we will do for that so first of all a basic idea proposed was modify the pixel values based on some function of the neighborhood of each pixel now based on some function you can see here it is written based on some function so what is this based on some function what should be this function can you guess so for example let's say this is some image right i am taking a 3 cross 3 image where this indicates each of the pixels right and these are intensity values just an arbitrary image this is image data and now we are having something called as kernel now we will see what is this kernel okay but what can this function be so that we can modify our original image so you can see this was our original image and we modified it to this image applying this some function kernel is nothing but some function that we are doing on this image so that we can guess just a single pixel value and obviously you may think that the image will be shrinked like 3 cross 3 is just one here and rest are all zero you can put rest zeros so what is this right so obviously image shrinking will be there and we will see that how to counter this shrinking by just putting zeros or this term in technical terms this is called zero padding and there are some other methods as well right so we will see all this thing in practical issues but the basic idea of filtering is that given an image we will apply something some kernel or some function and we will get this now you might wonder how we will get this 8 how we will apply this to this so i'll show you everything that 
it's nothing but a linear combination so multiply 10 into 0 5 into 0 3 into 0 then 4 into 0 then 6 into 0.5 then 1 into 0 so multiply corresponding pixels like right? that's why it is called linear combination and so you can see 6 into 0.5 will be 3 then this 1 into 1 is 1 I'm considering this one and this one and this 8 into 0.5 is 4 so you can see you will get 8 so just by a simple linear combination right this can be done see this is nothing but a simple linear combination and we will get some modified image data and we will see that how this filters the image how it enhances the image how the image will look better as compared to before after performing this kernel operation right so firstly let me erase stuff and so you can see here that this is nothing but a linear combination and sometimes this kernel is also called mask or filter so this is just the other name now let's see how we apply this filtering so now we are specifically that was the brief overview brief idea that we are having some filtering right some linear combination but what that operation is actually called let's try to say it so basically here previously the filter was something different here we are using some different filter which is called box filter or we can say averaging filter because why it is called box the name itself suggests why it is called box you can see because of the shape you will say that it is called box and averaging means total there are nine okay so this we are dividing by nine just to normalize so this is the image okay this is the actual image and you can see that this image is having some intensity values so what we will do is that let me just uh, give you the detail explanation so first of all i will put my this kernel this three cross three kernel in here over here okay so firstly i will put it let me just remove this for a while here and i will put it this three cross three kernel over here right the image data is just in this white right but as i said because we will lose the information at the corners we will see in the practical issues and that's why we are using this so you can see that firstly actually we have to start with this right but these are all zeros so answer will be zero so i'm not going in over there i will be starting with this second one so you can see that if i'll put this then it will be one all will be one so just linear combination so we will multiply so what we will get is rest are zeros only this is 1 into 90 and divided by 9 will give us what 10 right 90 divided by 9 is just 10 so our first image first pixel value over here is just 10 right similarly we can go for let me erase the annotations similarly the second this red circle that i already drawn that is already drawn for that the center pixel is this always we will modify the center pixel right so firstly i put this so let me just go to the animation that i have it in here so things will be more clear so firstly that linear combination operator that we sh showed you in the very last slide it's nothing but a correlation operator but don't confuse it with co convolution we will see what why is the need of convolution and this is very important thing i saw a couple of books and they are using it both this term interchangeably so that uh, so it's wrong right it's not correct and i'll show you what's the actual need of convolution what is the drawback of correlation and everything which is this lecture only so for that stay tuned but coming back to our topic here you can see that as i already told you we got 10 here right by putting this over there then where we put let me just give you the entire brief outcome sorry that here oh, let me take the pen yes so firstly where we put firstly was here but as i said everything will be zero so and what is the center pixel 
this one so always we will replace the value with the center pixel so that's why you can correspondingly see here this is zero because everything is zero now we shifted now we shifted with one so now we tried this and here we got just so don't put it here okay as i said always we have to replace the center pixel in the original value so you can see we replace this value right this value is 10 so always mind this thing now again we'll put let i am always erasing it so that you can see very well so now we will put in here so this two will give 19 to 1 19 to 1 so it will be 180 divided by 9 so it will be nothing but 20 right so we will get 20 but we have to put 20 here that is at the center of the kernel the kernel that we are placing at the center we have to put so here the center of the kernel we are getting 20 so you can see that our image which was just this with this intensity values is now modified to this right and we can continue this process so on for the entire image so it's like a operator that every time we will shift this kernel by one then again by one again by one and so on it will we will continue for the entire image right you can take the bigger kernel as well 5 cross 5 7 cross 7 so always it's good to have the kernel with odd number of order that is 5 cross 5 7 cross 7 and so on so can you guess why okay so this is your point to ponder and we will discuss in the very next lecture okay so uh, let me know in the comment section that why it is the need of just an even what if we use sorry why is the need of odd what if we will use even right can we use even right so please explain thoroughly so i am looking forward for your answers now after having this you can see that now let me put everything here so we can see that you are getting the modified pixel images right so this is the example of the average filtering that we just did so what average filtering does is that now it's pretty much clear that this is the original image and you can see after filtering we are getting the smoothen image it's blurring right so you might wonder it is this blurring important yes it is important because there are some noises right there are some high frequency noises at the edges and everything so now you can see everything is just blurred right so each shot what average filtering does is because we know that in average filtering the kernel is having one 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 all the values so it will give uniform weight to all the neighborhood pixels and just replace it by the average right the center pixel is being replaced right and you can see this is the input image and this is the output image and you can see the amount of filtering that we are getting right now let's see one more type of filtering the second is gaussian filtering so in here we are not having the everything as one so it means that now we are not giving all nearby pixels the same importance because in average filtering everything was one right so we are giving all the neighboring pixels equal importance but here we are giving the nearby pixels more important more importance than the neighboring than the other pixels right the distant pixels so you can see that the center pixel is given more weightage than one like one level about like one level below the center pixel you can see right we are giving a little less weightage than the center pixel and the far away pixels that is the distant ones we are giving a even less weightage that is one 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 right so we are giving different weightage to different pixels right so after doing the and this kernel is an approximation of a 2d gaussian function which is given here so this is our 2d gaussian function and based on this you can construct this so you can see as we already know that a gaussian is a symmetric bell curve so you can see the symmetricity over here can you see 
you can see here that it's one here then one here then two here then two here then one here and one here and the other way around that one here one here two here two here and again one one and one by six is nothing but just the averaging of all this this is just for normalization so you can add all this terms and you will get 16 so we will just divide by 16 so that our normalization is perfect right we didn't uh, do anything with the original intensity okay and that's why we need this normalization or else if you don't want normalize then our intensity values can change so we can distort our original image and that is what we doesn't want right so this is the Gaussian filter and now we will see that how Gaussian filter is better than the filter that is called average filter so this is a, just a Gaussian plot just for your visualization that this is a bell shape in 2D so you can see that a Gaussian filtering and this average filtering so both are somewhat different right uh, I, I think in this compressed video you might not get the actual difference but I, let me tell you what's the difference is that in Gaussian filtering you will get more smoothing in box filtering at the edges you will get some artifacts but in Gaussian filtering you won't get you can see here you will get some box kind of artifacts at the edges but Gaussian filtering won't get it right so you will get more smoothness in Gaussian filtering and I will recommend you uh, to see any Gaussian filtering example from uh, you can say Google just go to the images section of the Google search and you will get the Gaussian filtering versus box filtering any image right so that will be great if you can see so now the next class of filters are edge filters as I already said we will see we will cover edge detection in thorough detail but before that let's just see how we can find edges can you guess how we can find edges because what is an edge edge of an image let's say this is an image so in this there is something s is written right so how we can find edge because at edges we have abrupt changes in intensity values right you can abrupt let me write this that there will be abrupt changes in intensity values so there will be a difference in intensity of the neighboring pixels can I say this so you can see here that these are the edges right because the background is black but immediately we are getting white then again black then again white right Similarly here that everything is white then we are getting black and then again white so all these are edges so how we can get this edges can you guess that if we have some subtraction operator or the like uh, difference operator then we can get some edges so can you guess that how or what should be that uh, kernel for this edge filtering for this edge detection and as I said there are two types of edge detection uh, edges vertical edges and horizontal edges so you can see that these are the vertical edges and these are the horizontal edges and if you will take magnitude of all this both both the vertical and horizontal edges then you will get the actual image and this is true right so can you guess which one is for which one this is the kernel for the x that is horizontal and this is for the y that is vertical right but can you guess let, let me just give you one task that I what should I write gx here and gy here or the other way around to get this vertical edges and horizontal edges right so as I already said we want something as something called as difference right or subtraction and that is what we are doing with this kernel because the if you will put this kernel here then what it will do is that it will take this pixel and this pixel and just subtract it because there is minus one here and one here so basically we are adding but since because of this minus one we are subtracting and we are seeing that whether there is an intensity change whether there is an intensity difference in the image right so as you can see that here we are having this horizontal change right one is here minus one is here and this horizontal change will give us vertical edges yes it is other way around okay i repeat that this horizontal edges that this horizontal means it is just a way of remembering 
that this 1 and minus 1, 1 and minus 1 in this direction, right, horizontal direction will give us vertical edges. And this 1 minus 1, 1 minus, and I mean this one, I forgot 0 in between, 1 minus 1 and 1 minus 1, right, will give this horizontal edges, right. We will see the Python program for this. It is very simple, right. Python libraries makes life very simple. So this should be gx and this should be gy. And now you can get the intuition that why we are using this 1 and minus 1 for edges and not for filter, right. So these are horizontal edges, vertical edges, just taking under root of the intensity values, squared value, because we know that it is nothing but x square plus y square under root. This is nothing but our magnitude. So if you will take this magnitude, then we will get our original image. And this should be true, right? So moving further to our very important topic of this lecture that the previous thing that I just told that it's a linear combination, right? But what is that exactly? It's called correlation. And it is denoted by this, basically this symbol like this, okay? But I put it here, okay? Like this box, but it's just a notation matter, but it's called correlation. Now, what are the drawbacks of correlation? And thus, what is the need of convolution? We will try to propose the idea of the need of convolution. So let's see how we can do this. So we are given an image. You can see we are given image, which is, let me just remove this for a while. So you can see this is an image, but I will call it an impulse image. Now you might wonder what is this impulse? Impulse function in mathematics, nothing but a just one, if I am considering discrete impulse, then it's just one at zero value and rest it is zero for entire values of n. So it's the same like this is an impulse image. It is just one. White means one. We know that black means zero intensity value and white means one, right? So it's just white at any one location. So it's just like an impulse function that right? it is one at some one particular location and zero elsewhere. So it's like the same thing. So you can see that this is in our impulse image and if I do correlation operator that is our uh, linear combination that is I will put this kernel here or I will just multiply the corresponding values right and I will get some output image right so can you guess what will be the output image because we know that Convolution with impulse, like I told convolution, okay, because I am trying to propose the idea of convolution, right, gives the function itself. Any function convolved with con delta function, any function x of n, if I will convolve it with delta n, right, it will give the same function itself. So, in image as well, because since we consider this as an impulse image, so any image any image, right? Sorry, any impulse image, right? Convolved with some kernel. Okay, so let me write it impulse image. So let me just repeat it again that any impulse image convolved with some kernel or any other function should give us what? The same kernel again, this ABC, DEF, and GHI, right? Because we know that anything with impulse should give the same thing, same kernel again, right? But you will see that using this correlation, we won't get it. So let's see what we will get actually. So actually we will get is something called inverted output. Okay. So you can see here what I wrote is correlation gives inverted output, but no worries there is convolution at our rescue. So let's see how the convolution is there at our rescue in the very next image. So you can see that, let me just remove the annotations. So you can see that this is again the impulse image, the same image. And if I will convolve it with this in previous slide, I just wrote this, but let's say this is some something like this. Okay. The intensity values ABC that was general. But now the intensity values are something. So we are getting some shades. You can see there are some different shades, right? So you are, we are getting shades and 
if we will do this right then what we will get is the inverted output this is the output that we are getting okay just this is a correlation operator okay not convolution right so just don't get confused so if i will uh, convolve sorry not i will correlate using the correlation operator right using the correlation operator if i will uh, uh, correlate this impulse image with some a b c d e f g h i this and in general i wrote this but particularly let's say this is the image with different intensity values different gray shades then we will get this as the output so you can see that we are not getting this image because as i said anything correlated with impulse should give us the same thing okay same kernel but you can see this is flipped version not flipped it is double flipped it is upside down as well as left to right is also flipped so you can see this is here right let me just remove the annotation and show you again that what i am trying to say so you can see that this is here this color is here this color is here so it is upside down flip flipped as well as we are flipping this side as well left to right right and this is the drawback of correlation that what uh, we are doing with correlation is we are getting the upside down image but we want an image processing as well that in signals because as we considered image as also one function and signal is also one function right so in signals as i already said that con convolving with delta should be the original image again so in image as well convolving with Im impulse with right should give the original image so should give this but it is actually giving this so what if we want again the same thing right and here the convolution is important that in convolution we will first flip it right so because we know that let me just give you analogy as well so again i am giving analogy that x of t h of oh, let me just give x of t convolution with h of t it's in time domain but you can consider it for discrete domain as well so how we write it is something like this that it should be from integration from minus infinity to infinity it should be x of tau some new variable h of t minus tau so what we are doing is n d tau so what we are doing is first we are shifting our kernel or our impulse function so here this is our or convolution is commutative right so you can write the other way around that is h of tau and x of t minus tau doesn't matter so what we are doing is we are flipping so firstly what we will do is that we will flip it we will flip it twice that is upside down as well as left to right and then we will convolve this to images right and now you can see we will get the original image so firstly we flip this twice that is upside down and left to right and then we perform correlation and that is what will give us the again the same image right you can see the images are same so we can say that convolution is nothing but flip the filters in both direction that is bottom to top and left to right and apply correlation right so convolution and correlation has this difference and this is very important and many books are just using this term interchangeably and which is not correct right and now this concludes that the, this implies that correlation is useless right in image processing to be particular i can't say in general it is useless but in image processing it is useless but is it correct Accuracy is not correct. There are some different domains like uh, template matching, right? In all those stuff, correlation is also needed, right? So we can't say it's useless, but it's better to have convolution instead of correlation, right? And we will see that what are different properties of convolution, which makes it far better in this computer vision domain, right? I will not be talking about other domains, but since we are in discussing computer vision, so I will discuss that. why convolution is needed right we will see all the properties of convolution so stay tuned for that but i hope this point is clear this slide is very much important in this lecture that again i am repeating that given an impulse image 
right if we perform correlation operator we will get a flipped image so what we will do is that firstly we will flip our kernel twice and we will get this and then we will perform correlation right and i will and in general we won't show this flipping right and we just define one new operator called convolution which will flip automatically and will give again us the same image that is this image and this image are same right and in next slide this point will be again more clear so let me just remove all the stuff so you can see it's again the same thing nothing new but just for better understanding i just wrote it so correlation is having plus here right mathematically there should be some difference between the two because we saw visually we saw visually that there are some difference there is some difference yeah here you can see there is a minus sign so as i said we are flipping it we are flipping our kernel right and that's why we are getting again the same image right so this is basically the difference and there is something missing on here that there should be 2k plus 1 into 2k plus 1 square right and it doesn't matter actually yeah but the normalization should be there why 2k plus 1 because we are having minus k to k so total 2k plus 1 terms so since we are averaging because everything is averaging only in this filtering till now so there should be this at in the denominator of this but it's okay if you we don't write right so that's it about convolution and correlation and now let's see our next topic so what should be next so i'm ending this lecture here because i think it's pretty much lengthy right so we will see the separability of convolution operator so as i said that we need to if we have three cross three image so and three cross three kernel right so we will need how many operations how many multiplications we will need 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 we will need nine multiplications so but if size will increase 5 cross 5 then uh 7 cross 7 and so on then our computation cost will increase right so can we reduce it computation cost so can we reduce it we will see it in next lecture then we will see different properties of convolution operator this is off okay pardon me then we will see advantages of linear shift invariant operators that is nothing but convolution and correlation so what are their advantages in computer vision why they are actually good in computer vision and we will wrap up this filtering by some practical issues so what happens at the boundaries i gave you some little bit of glimpse of this boundary issues that zero bending and all so how we will counter that boundary issues because at boundary there is a chance of losing our information of the image so what we will do at the boundaries meanwhile you can think of it until we will see each other in our very next lecture so stay tuned thank you and i hope you all loved it